Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. So this is our Tech Safari Live series. My name's Katie Virtue. I'm with Festive Road, and I'm part of the GBTA Tech Committee. And this is one of the initiatives we started a few years back. Obviously, we've done a number of webinars um, that we had, Tech Safari uh, featuring different technologies, solutions, new providers that we want to highlight and, and provide um, to the industry. And so we thought it would be great to have a Tech Safari Live here at GBTA. And we had just about 30 companies um, submit to be able to present today. And out of that, we chose seven um, final companies that are presenting today. So they'll have about 10 minutes to come up. Um, we've asked them to share you know, some type of demo, new, new solution technology that they've come out with. And then there'll be a couple minutes for, for Q&A. And we'll just keep moving through um, the different companies. And there's a mic right there in the middle. So if you do have a question um, after they, they do their 10 minutes, just, just step up and ask them. All right, so Jack, you're up first. Ooh. Hello, everybody. I'm Jack Dow, founder and CEO of Grapevine, an AI-powered remarketing technology for business travel. Thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, this is my first ever conference, so it's very exciting to be here, and I'm honored that you're coming to the Wednesday morning session when most of you probably had a very long week, but uh, I hope you've had as good a time as I have. So I'm going to start with a couple of uh, questions for you. I don't know if there's any travel managers in the audience. Okay. So are you looking to increase in-policy and in-platform bookings? And are you looking to truly look after your travelers every step of the way throughout their trip? <laughs> And for the TMCs out there, are you looking to improve capture of hotels uh, airport, um, and other ancillaries throughout the trip? Any TMCs here? No? <laughs> um, and also looking to improve, uh, improve revenue per trip with no operational overhead. Because if you are, that's why we're here. Because at the moment, 70% of travelers book hotels and other ancillaries off-platform. 70%. That's a huge amount of revenue being lost. But it's, just not, it's not just revenue for TMCs. This creates duty of care issues for uh, corporates, as well as an inefficient user experience for business travelers. So why does this happen? On a typical business trip, as soon as I've locked in a meeting overseas, I want to lock in my flight first. And that's because it's a finite resource, and I want to lock it in before prices go up or the time slots I want, uh, they, they get lost. So do I want a hotel at the same time? Yeah, but I can come back to it later. Do I want airport parking, lounge access, fast track security, as well as restaurants and things like that in destination? I sure do, but I've got a lot of time to think about it. And this is where the problem lies, because TMCs are typically geared up to serve as inbound requests for, uh, for bookings, not to proactively retail to uh, clients after the initial booking. And they yeah. And as a result, a lot of bookings are left off, done off-platform, which creates all these headaches that we talked about at the beginning. And that's where Grapevine comes in. Our autonomous remarketing technology plugs into agent data, so TMC data, and identifies what people have booked and, importantly, what they haven't yet booked. From the minute you book your flight to the moment you get home, we send a series of personalized right-time, right-channel messages that understand your travel policy, uh, where you've stayed before for hotels, where your colleagues have stayed before, and, w and know the, exactly the right time to send you things like airport parking, uh, taxis, fast track security, and lounge access. And that might be in the build up to the trip or alert base. So, hey, we've just seen your plane's been delayed. Would you like lounge access? Or, hey, we've just seen, seen the queues along in the airports. Would you like fast track security? And I'm uh, sorry, but this is just the beginning uh, because thanks partly to COVID, there's an un um, there's tra traveling for uh, 
for business has never been more complex. There's an unprecedented amount of risks, requirements, and unknowns contributing to traveler anxiety. This includes what are the travel restrictions in the destination? Is the destination COVID safe? What is my carbon footprint of the trip? What is my travel and expense policy? And is the destination solo travel or LGBTQ plus safe? In addition to that, how can I stay fit and healthy when traveling? The good news for travelers is this is increasingly in focus for corporates. And they are now uh, you know, more committed than ever to offer these kind of considerations to the travelers. And that's why we've created Grapevine uh, Premium, a single pre-trip email that captures everything the traveler needs to mitigate pre-trip risk and travel anxiety and build confidence and enthusiasm about the trip. The email, which can be branded to the corporate, contains travel itinerary highlights, destination risk and DEI information, a carbon footprint reminder, otherwise known as visual guilt, and policy and um, travel and expense policy and emergency number links, as well as employee well-being and pleasure solutions such as restaurants, live events, and gym classes and yoga classes. In one single email, we help corporates um, deliver duty of care and travel uh, employee well-being and travel risk um, uh, solutions. So two products offering incredible value to all stakeholders in business travel. And thanks to some great in partnerships we have forged and are forging, integrations with TMCs are both simple and cost-free with no operational impact. And our pricing models are very simple and the technology is available now uh, and producing fantastic results. So feel free to speak to our partners, such as Gradles in the UK, who'd be happy to provide a reference. So this, if this is of interest, we'd, be lo we'd love to chat, and thanks very much for having us. D does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Oh, we've got one. Laura, you're up. I'm up. Short. Um, you said uh, sustainability information. So if a company has, uh, let's say they use thrust carbon, could that information, so that it's all uh, consistent within their program, be linked into Grapevine? Yeah, 100%. So we're actually integrated with thrust carbon already. Okay. So, uh, I spend half my time selling their products to, uh, to most other people. But yeah, so we've got an integration with Thrust Carbon. So when we, it comes from the same uh, travel data as we get for our core product. And so we're looking at that and we're analyzing through that what the uh, carbon footprint of the trip is. So, you know, I think it's really important for TMCs um, to offer point of sale um, uh, carbon footprint. Right. This is kind of an after the fact reminder, and it's really just reinforcing the messaging. And as I said, visual guilt, sort of, hey, you know, this is your, and what, what I love about Thrust Carbon is they give you the equivalent. So this is the equivalent of 2,000 plastic bags or whatever right. it is. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? No? Thank you very much. My name is Tor Magnuson. Can you guys hear me with this? Oh, this one? Well, my name is Tor Magnuson, and I'm with a Certify. Certify is probably a company you've never heard of, but the reality is we know all of you. Does that sound a little bit scary, a little ominous? Uh, well, we are a fraud prevention provider doing about $1.4 trillion a year through our machine learning models. You probably do recognize... No pressure. 300 people are going to start running over here right now. It's going to be great. I think you probably do recognize the blue box, right? American Express. So American Express acquired us in 2010. Um, so we've been doing this, we're one of the early entrants into the market. Specifically, we were actually created by people in travel who wanted to go through and combat fraud and fraudulent bookings. With us today, GBTA, I think one of the marketing ploys that they had on the website was, hey, $1.4 trillion. Well, pretty common, 
pretty uncanny. We actually do 1.4 trillion across our entire network in the last 12 months. That equates to about 14 billion payments that we're going through and doing risk modeling on. We service four of the top banks, 10 of the top global airlines, and about 40% of all of your online transactions come Black Friday. So if you're buying anything from Walmart, Target, Kohl's, Kroger, you're buying any airline ticket, it's probably coming through our systems or we're giving a risk score on it. We focus in account protection. So everyone probably has a loyalty account. You might have 30 or 40 of them, right? Do you use the same password across all those accounts? 90 plus, I think the, the number was 91% of people use the same password over and over. 66% of us, you know, continue to use that password across all of our loyalty accounts. There's 4,000 breaches a year that are publicly disclosed, exposing 22 billion personal records. So, a little scary. They only have to get that one password and then they'll just ping different loyalty accounts. Do you know how many points you have across every one of these loyalty accounts? Probably not, right? But they treat it as cash. So you log on to your airline account. You had 75,000 points there last month. Now there's none. Your password is still the same. In that time, a fraudster has gotten in, changed the password, stolen your points, either redeemed them or transferred them to a new wallet. And so that's where we can go through and actually do account protection and recognize when they're doing a bot attack, when they're doing a scripted attack, when they're taking over your account. We can remove save payments. We can remove any of the risk associated. We remove the ability to do a buy button. And the reality is this is cash. It's got value. So when you have a person that maybe stays with a hotel, a bunch of times, a lot of loyalty to that one hotel, they log in six months later or after COVID, a year later when they want to book their first rewards trip, they call in and, or they look on the app and there's no points left. They're going to call you and say, what the heck, you let my account get hacked. Well, it's your customer's fault because they're using the same password everywhere, but they don't see it that way. So you can use a certify to enable the safety and protection of your accounts, which is a huge revenue driver, huge cost driver. And also once a person's account is taken over, they're going to tell at least three people about that and they're not, most likely not going to use you again for the next trip. In addition to that, we do fraud and payments. So on the time of transaction, like with Grapevine, the plane ticket is usually first. We have most of the airlines. We're going to know the device that they're using to purchase. We're going to know the IP that it's coming from. We're going to know how you opened your phone. This is where it gets a little bit creepy, right? We're going to know how you opened your phone. If I give you my phone, it's going to know that's not me. Not only because of facial recognition, but also if I give you my phone, my password is 8966. It's going to know the cadence in which I hit my password. It's going to know the size of my thumb, the pressure of my thumb in the app. We're going to know how you move your mouse, how you interact with a website. We're going to be able to get a lot of information to create a seamless experience. So we're going to be, we are able to take all of this in fraud, payments, and chargebacks. So chargebacks are when they call in and they say, hey, I don't recognize this charge, or hey, there was an issue with my booking, and they dispute it. That's a headache. That's a huge cost driver in operational costs. And also, financially, you're talking billions of dollars. We can go through and automate that because we know what happened at the time of transaction. We know when the person opened up their app and they used that service, and we can automatically dispute that back to the credit card companies on your behalf. We are a global team, and just because we're owned by Amex does not mean we only take Amex. We are totally card agnostic. We take anything from Amex to IOUs to, to crypto, you name it. It's going through our system. At our core, you can think about that, 14 billion payment events, trillion plus dollars, been doing this for 10 plus years. It's a huge amount of data. The core part of what we are, it's a machine learning company focused on eliminating risk and identifying trust. So with that, we're going to take all the information in, we can layer in your business processes, your business policies and rules on top of our machine learning and spit out essentially a confidence score and identifying the risk on a small fraction of your orders and the rest of the transactions, we're going to say this is a high level of trust, maybe give them a unique experience or customer experience where it's totally frictionless. And that's where we use the five pillars of digital identity to create what we call a digital identity trust score. And so that's where 
your phone, right? We're going to know your phone, your mobile phone, which you're using all your apps and you're connected to your home networks. We're going to know your network, how you're connecting to us. We're going to know all the history of all your purchases. Think about my trip here to San Diego. I live in Connecticut. I booked my flight, went through a certify. My wife bought some clothes because I had no clothes that fit me because of COVID-20, right? I get, that went through a certify. And so when I booked my flight, I also booked my hotel and I booked the car. And so in flying to the airport that morning, I stopped and got coffee. Everyone's, you know, it's a $5 coffee. You can probably guess where it is. I open the app. It takes a snapshot. It knows I'm now outside the coffee place. It knows I'm five minutes away from the coffee place. They're getting it ready for me. Frictionless, no passwords, no anything. When I get to the airport, I can go through and I already prepaid for parking, QR code. They know it's me. They trust the device. I download my boarding pass. We're taking a snapshot. We know you're there. We know you've purchased your ticket. We're ready for you. We're waiting. Keep that trust going. When I get off the plane, now I'm in California. It's waiting for me to go check in. I don't have to go give my ID or credit card at the front desk for the rental car company. They know it's me. We can offer a totally unique friction-free experience to your best customers. And so that's where with Marriott, I do the mobile check-in that's powered by us. So we can offer a ton of friction-free customer experiences that you would not normally think of as a fraud provider, right? Fraud providers are usually seen as business killers or friction creators. What we're actually doing is creating unique experiences where we're able to eliminate fraud risk that normally on events that would be really fraudulent or have a lot of risk inherited with it. So we're going to be able to go through and understand your connection, your type of device, the reputation around that across our entire network, and then your behavior. Are you a bot? Are you um, doing screen scraping to pull pricing? So we can give all those insights back to your business to protect your brand. So what does that actually mean when it comes to the numbers? It's like, it kind of sounds neat, but does it work? That's the biggest thing. So with our airlines, part of what they're doing is they have a large team usually that's going through and looking at fraudulent or risky orders. That's a huge operational cost. And people, you know, we've never been in more of a need it now, want my confirmation of my booking right now. We're able to go through and re reduce some of the largest airlines, in the, in the, at least in the nation here, with the North American Airlines cutting down their review 25 to 40 percent. Everyone's expected to do more with less, and so we're enabling that. So not only are we cutting down their operational expense, but we're also saving them millions upon millions in, in fraud by being able to pinpoint the fraud. One of the things I'm most proud of, we have an airline model, we have a retail model, we have an OTA model. We're doing the same thing with the other travel industries with identifying risk and giving a more friction-free experience. One of our retailers, I put on the model. They had, a great, they had great results. We did an AB. We were able to see that if they had used their existing, they built up, they had a lot of pride in it. They were canceling too much. We switched them over to our machine learning model and they got $31 million in additional sales in 18 months. I think the product kind of sold itself to the for a five-year renewal. It was pretty easy once we did that. But if you guys would like to offer a more friction-free experience to your customers, we'd love to talk to you guys. So thank you very much. Hey, good morning. I'm Steve with Trip Kicks. We're a travel technology powerhouse, empowering companies throughout the world to achieve their travel program goals and improve the experience of their travelers. This week at GBTA, our company released our largest update to date. And now I'm here with five minutes, five points on five slides to tell you all about it. One, better connected. The travel manager, the company, BCD, American Airlines, Uber, DFW Airport, the American Express Centurion Lounge, Clear, Slack, Enterprise, Apple Maps, Hilton, Yelp, WeWork, Jim Pass, Calm, Calm, 
What do they all have in common? They all helped get me from Dallas, Texas to San Diego, arriving at GBTA to be with you all right here, right now. What if they were all connected? Tripkicks enables unprecedented connectivity between the travel manager, the traveler, and the supplier. We're bridging the gaps between all the touch points and all of the different parts of a trip, starting at the time of booking and search, going to pre-trip, on trip, after trip, and at any point after that, we deliver the right message at the right time so that travelers can stay connected to what matters most for them. Two, better experience. Travelers are looking to stay connected, be better informed, and make the most of their trip. With Trip Kicks, travelers receive insights and guidance throughout all the different parts of their trip at the time of booking, wherever they search, when they're on the trip, or at any other point in time, they receive timely messages and are connected to relevant resources that provide them the ability to tap into different insights of their trip and receive information that's appropriate for them, specifically curated for them as a traveler. They can also view suggestions that are specific to the trip. Travelers can see what flights are the most eco-friendly. They can see hotels that offer various amenities that might be the most appropriate for them. They're able to... Last minute prep. They can browse and make reservations at local minority-owned restaurants, find co-working locations like WeWork and others that the company partners with. And find a moment for on-trip mindfulness at local parks and peaceful places nearby. Three, better influence. Today, travel managers are tasked with big initiatives around things like sustainability, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and as well as classic goals like managing their preferred suppliers, adoption, and other things linked to their travel program. Today, by leveraging our traveler engagement channels, travel managers can influence decisions as travelers book their trip by connecting them to relevant resources and tips that support the initiatives of their travel program and their company. Travel managers can call attention to their most preferred options and explain to travelers why they'll love them, like hotels that have free breakfast, or maybe enhanced amenities like running trails, or other fitness-related activities. Four, better engagement. We provide the bridge between traveler, company, and supplier. Suppliers connect to new traveler engagement touch points where they can distribute dynamic, timely, and actionable content to improve traveler experience and strengthen brand loyalty. These capabilities are powered by a new technical architecture that allows us to facilitate the exchange of information based on various conditions or triggers. It's all designed for information to be exchanged within partners that are in the TripKicks ecosystem, which can unlock new connection for suppliers and drive a more personalized traveler experience. We want to work with all the suppliers, so open APIs are a core component of our solution. Five, better travel. At TripKicks, we've always been focused on providing uh, a better experience for travelers and helping companies improve their travel program. And how we've done that over time has certainly changed, just as the priorities and what's important to travel programs has evolved as well. 
now more than ever, it's important for everything to be connected together, for programs to be able to achieve what's important for them, and for travelers to maximize the value of a trip, to travel better. We sit at the intersection of the various stakeholders that enable business travel. Our corporate clients, their travel technologies and tools, suppliers, TMCs, each of them focused on specific yet different objectives. Tripcakes is uniquely positioned to connect it all together. We're on a mission to connect it all and make travel better. We're on a mission to... <laughs> Do you ever have one of these presentations that at the last minute, you just don't put in the time you need to to get it all done? That's what we're experiencing right now. I apologize, everybody. Trip Kicks is uniquely positioned to connect it all together. We're on a mission to help us all be better connected, equipping travelers with everything they need to have a better experience, empowering travel managers so that they can better influence decisions, opening suppliers to new touch points with better engagement. We're Trip Kicks, and we're on a mission to make business travel better and allow for more time for presentation prep. Thank you. Any questions? All right. My name is Matt Beck, and I work with Circo. Our product is Zeno, and we're rolling out this year, well, actually today, is our Zeno Concierge product, which is really geared at offering an end-to-end -end solution to manage for non-employee travel. In this context, uh, you'll see that our, our, our system is going to enable you to apply policy, uh, allow you to manage the corporate payment process, and, and integrate with all your existing systems that you, that you may have in place, whether that's TMC or accounting systems, uh, as well as even financial institutions from the bank or other perspective. So rather than try to attempt to get through a really long demo in a really short time, I made a video. Zeno Concierge makes it easy to book and manage travel and expense for guest travelers who are not employees, like candidates who need to travel for interviews or consultants who are flying in for a meeting. All the host needs to do is enter the guest's details along with the relevant event info and policy. The guest gets an invitation from Zeno with the event information they require for the trip, and they can quickly log in and self-book their itinerary based on those trip parameters. The guides for what can and can't be booked for this trip are made really clear, so there's no confusion. Guests search and book itinerary elements based on what's best for them within the overall policy. Zeno gives them all the information they need to choose the best options, including corporate negotiated rates and what choices are available within policy. For air, hotel, and car rental, they can also add their own loyalty program details during the process and personalize the trip to their preferences based on available options in policy. The traveler doesn't need to worry about providing their own form of payment, and they can be ready to roll with their confirmed itinerary in a matter of minutes. Of course, every trip involves expenses, and Zeno makes it super easy for guests to submit expense claims and get reimbursed promptly. Zeno scans receipts for the information needed and it's easy for guests to fill in any further details. Anything out of policy is flagged for review and the approver can be done with expense claims in minutes so reimbursement can be processed and the guest gets their money back promptly. Guest travelers are happy because the process is seamless and simple for them and their host is happy because everything is managed within policy and the administrative headache is gone. Zeno Concierge the smarter way to book travel for your guests. All right, let's dive in. Uh, a lot of ground to cover, 
and we're not going to cover it all, but you know, you can always visit later. So let's talk about hosts, right? There's really three pieces of pain in this process. There is the host side where you've got to invite guests. We want to make that as streamlined and simple as possible. So this will allow them to send those invites. We'll automatically send sequential and triggered emails from that so the guest knows where they're going, when they need to be there, how they should arrive, and any rules or restrictions related to going there. Uh, beyond that, though, you have the guest side of the benefits, which is where, again, they're looking for simple. And here's one of those places where having... Having the ability to already incorporate all the preferred vendors, have the services, the hotels, the airlines, and even be able to include your own personal reward numbers, because let's be honest, we all want to get those. So having that all built in and then leveraging corporate forms of payment so you don't have to sweat whether I'm doing it right or wrong because it's all incorporated into the process. The last constituent, which we aren't going to show here, is going to be your finance team. So if you look at how guests are managed today, I bet all of you can go find out. On average, it takes between $100 and $300 of processing costs to get people up and running because they have to set your guest up as a vendor in order to issue a PO, in order to pay them cash. So that whole process is such a beatdown. Whereas with our system, we'll be able to just leverage, roughly speaking, 18 fields. I know that sounds really specific because it is. Uh, but with 18 fields, I actually can allocate it to the right cost center, under the right person, with the right policy. And that can be different based on the type of guests that you're dealing with. So here's the at a glance. <laughs> I'm only going to talk about the top headers. Feel free to read as much or as little as you want. We're going to manage it from the invitation side, where we're going to have a form that takes roughly a minute for that host to go in. Once they do that, then the guests can go manage their booking in an automated fashion. The nice thing about our system is that they don't need training. And if they do want training, we actually embed it into the system itself. So the first thing they'll see is, welcome, it's Zeno. Let me tell you how to get around. And so, uh, so it makes it quick and easy from there. When they have their event, we can continue to keep that white glove of service experience with them. So we'll send a note before the event, hey, don't forget, bring a toothbrush. And we recommend Uber because that's the best way to get around in our city. And then after the event, we remind them, hey, don't forget, we pay for some of those expenses. Just don't spend too much. On the expense side, of course, we've already incorporated all this. Keep in mind on the approval, there's, there's as much or as little as you want. We have some companies that are like, look, if it's in policy, I don't want you to tell me about McDonald's. Just push it through because it's a waste of my time and theirs to review a McDonald's receipt. Awesome. We won't. We even go so far as to embed auditing for those that want it. We have an included human-driven audit process managed from Circle employees. Lastly is, of course, the finance reconciliation. We play with all your major players. So whether that's SAP or Oracle or the more Sage, Workday, and the other ones that are at the small, medium market enterprise, we, we manage to make that easy for everybody. The work goes from the beginning to the end, registration all the way to disabling them so that they no longer have access to your systems to submit relevant expenses. Haha, <laughs> and now we're at the question side where I've got about three minutes left. So fire away if you have any. Otherwise, come visit us. We do give away cool stuff. Yeah, we're just going to move on to the next one. Um, you got it? Bill. Ah. Oh, you know what? Oh. Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> Shitless. Oh. Is that on mic? Sorry. <laughs> 
but that's what the slide looks like. Supposed to be presenting at 11. We're so far ahead. Yeah, they've been doing like six minutes. I have a timer. <laughs> Thank you. Did you want a podium mic or do you want a hand mic? All right, I gotta unmute it. Good. Great to see a good crowd here. Whoa, all right, here, we're hot mic. Hot mic. Mic K, too loud, we're good. All right, good morning and thank you for your patience. I was at 11, but we're ahead of schedule, so. Uh, Mr. Daly found me. All right. Um, thank you for coming and listening to all the cool innovation happening here. So we're going to talk about BTP automation. My name is Annette Cumming. Um, I am the Chief Revenue Officer, and I'm just super excited to be here. We're right over there, our booth, <laughs> if you want to stop by. And I'm just so excited to introduce this technology here at GBTA. This is our first ever conference and we've got some really cool tech. So before we kind of dive into um, how we're different and what um, we're bringing to the market, I have a really fun video about who we are that I'm gonna show you. Corporate hotel sourcing is still being done using spreadsheets, emails, and phone calls. Um, is that the 80s calling? These dated processes cost millions and you can't fix what you can't see. Shouldn't we change the way we work? Introducing the BTP Index by BTP Automation. Led by Bruce Yoxhammer and Dan Whaley, who pioneered online travel bookings in the 90s. The Index automatically renegotiates program terms and conditions throughout the hotel program lifecycle. The only fully automated hotel sourcing system reduces sourcing time from months to weeks with data-driven refinements that use travel patterns and changing market conditions. You can aggregate and automate all data sources, expenses, GDS, and third-party pre-trip data. And receive proactive, corrective actions that save money before travel occurs. Increase your traveler satisfaction. Drive business to your preferred hotel. Dynamically negotiate or renegotiate terms. And supercharge ROI. BTP Automation. Let's change the way we work. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. It's just a great representation of who we are in a, in a kind of fun way. Um, let's talk about how we're different in the market. And, and we are um, truly innovators in the hotel sourcing space. We are doing things that no one else is doing right now. And really it's based upon this premise of you cannot fix what you can't see. And for us, that's about real-time actionable data coming into our environment that allows corporate buyers and TMCs to source differently than they do today. So the, the use case I love to give, and this actually happened to one of our customers, they negotiated a $150 rate, they were $20 below bar, three months later, their rate was $10 above bar. Had they not had our system where we aggregate and watch this data constantly, they would have never known their rate became uncompetitive. So it's incredibly important to have that visibility, but also to do something about it. So we love to use this slogan, you can't fix what you can't see. So there's also the RFP aspect of it. So we like to say we will manage and take care of you from an RFP perspective from A to Z. So that's not only real-time data, it is automating the RFP. Hotels love it because it's a digital handshake Everything about your program and what you need and your sourcing goes over in a digital capacity. But then we also make sure we're following up. 
The moment that RFP goes out the door, we're watching. And if the hotel has not touched it within 24 hours, we're on it. We'll call, we'll email, we'll make sure that that hotel is actioning your RFP. And then compliance. So we identify and automate when someone didn't book the right hotel or didn't book the right rate or maybe even booked out of channel. And we do that through a partnership with Traxo. So we're helping buyers manage their compliance. And then data, obviously, we're a data company. So reports telling you everything about your program. And then we monitor and audit the rates. So it's not just about doing your RFP. You've got to make sure the rates are still in there um, when people are booking them and then, um, and then load it into the system. So we do all of that A to Z and then make it easy. So we serve three pieces of the travel industry uh, puzzle or ecosystem. First is the corporate buyer, incredibly important. Um, they have a lot of stressors in their life right now. So we want to make it easier on them, automate the process, uh, take those two to three months, as the video described, out of their life and make it much easier for them. But we also work with TMCs. They're very important to us. We, in many cases, they do the sourcing for the travel manager. So we want to make sure their life is easy. We have TMCs using this product today. And then hotels. Hotels love us, actually, <laughs> because we make their life easier. They can complete an RFP in under a minute. Right? They have their own portal. They go in. They answer it. And, and it, we just are making it so much easier for them. And then you, you caught a little bit of that in the, uh, in the video, and, and we've got one of our, um, our leaders here, Dan, um, Bruce is right over there. So Bruce and Dan are innovators in their DNA. They founded Internet Booking 25 years ago. So uh, they've come back out of retirement, they're leading the company, and um, we're just shaking things up again. All right, everyone, thank you for your time. Questions? Yeah, <laughs> yes. No, it's real time, absolutely real time. So when we launch a customer, we take uh, that GDS access, but we can do expense data, we can do track so out of program, but it's all real time, that's the value, right? So it's dynamic. Great question. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you everyone. Thanks for your time. All right. Hello, mic check, check one. Hey, mic check. Check, check, check. Good here. Check, 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 check. How's that sound? Good? Huh? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm scaring the children. Good morning, good day, happy last day of GBTA. I'm Bill Hogate with Simmerd. And what I'm going to show you today is game changing, maybe life changing, but at a minimum, game changing. I got five minutes and I'll do all this in 10. I want to show you how smart contracts can automate negotiated agreements that benefit the buyers, the suppliers, and the travelers. That's what I'm going to focus on. We're a tech solution company focused on corporate travel. Focused on corporate travel. We leverage the power of the blockchain to improve the relationship between the buyer and the supplier and the traveler. Our sister company is Winding Tree, a Web3 pioneer that's been in this space since 2017. We're not a GDS, we're not NDC, we're not a TMC, we're not an aggregator, an aggravator, or an alligator. We're not a disruptor. We empower change. We empower change with our buyers and suppliers. It sounds pretty complicated, honestly, when you say blockchain and smart contracts, but the only thing I can assure you is, if I at this point can understand it, you all can. So what's going on today? You know what's going on. You've been listening to it for the last few days. Buyers are challenged, suppliers are challenged, travelers are frustrated, 
but we all keep talking about how we want to focus on the traveler experience, and I don't know who to blame. Maybe I do. It's been a little bit difficult for all the companies, and there's some great companies here and throughout GBTA that have been trying to innovate. But at some point in time, you can only go so far in making the changes that are necessary for the future, particularly when we talk about enhancing these relationships and leveraging technologies now that have emerged. Welcome to the safari. And I'm not lying to you when I tell you these things. Our strength is the partnerships. We're not a standalone provider. We believe that we can deliver our technology to you through the marketplace with your partners, with your suppliers, with your OBT. We're not an interface. I did say we're not an alligator also. We're the plumbing. It's not real gorgeous sounding, but we're running behind the scenes. So you're not having to change everything else out. You have enough challenges today. This week, we announced a relationship with Atris, one of the leading next generation platforms, OBT and Agent Desktop. We try to align ourselves right now as a young startup with like-minded, innovative companies. Frankly, I don't have the time to go through and convince Concur how we're gonna change the world. They don't wanna hear about it. So we work with innovative companies who are aligned in the same fashion, leverage new technology, focus on the buyer and the supplier and the traveler. And in this case, what we're creating through smart contracts is the ability to put together corporate bundles of what I call traveler benefits. You have corporate benefits, you have traveler benefits. Some people call them soft dollars, but they're really intended to benefit the traveler. If we're spending all this time talking about, we've got to make the traveler experience better, well, how about maybe using some of these benefits you've already negotiated? Now, how did I learn that? Well, I'm not that smart, but buyers told me. Buyers told me that we have dollars and dollars and dollars of all these benefits, and we use them how best we can, but they don't have an automated way using smart agreements to say, when this traveler travels to this destination on this segment, the smart contract's back there saying, give them this bundle. Deliver that bundle that will make that trip better. Wi-Fi, club access, preferred seating, whatever it might be, whatever you might have negotiated. It's up to the buyer to decide how they want to do it, and we help them design their automated agreements. In this case, you can see at the point of sale, the buyer now has that chance to look not only at what fare they could get, but here's actually a bundle that will go through that's being provided by my company and our suppliers to make my trip better. Visualize it, drive better behaviors. So smart contracts, what do we know about that? I heard that contract management is not an issue at all in the industry. Everyone's really happy and they've got all these agreements they manage, they spend all this labor and all this time trying to manage this. I think it's a big problem. In fact, I characterize it as a nightmare. And someone said it in a session the other day and I wrote it down because I, Wow, it is, it's terrible. So just to reinforce, we want to help the buyers and suppliers connect. Smart contracts behind the scene will automate that. But whether it's your OBT, your TMC, or Supplier Direct, and I'll talk about our partnership where we're working on Supplier Direct solutions. We don't want to have to change everything. We just want to be the plumbing behind the scenes. I talked about Atris in a moment. I'm going to talk about what we're doing with new travel. Wow, the voice of God has spoken. And also some other partnerships that we're establishing with other, again, like-minded companies, Spotnana, Amtrav. We want to work with innovators who want to help us figure out how to bring this to market, how to make these changes. So we're not doing it alone. We're working with other companies, and we expect this to grow. But you take a couple steps at a time. You take a little bite of that. It's a migration. It's not a revolution. We need to go first and get the industry comfortable with the power and the concept of what smart contracts bring to the table. And sitting underneath all this is our little old smart contracts working away, developed and designed by the buyer to automatically put their agreements in place to not only uh, monitor the compliance of it in real time, so rather than waiting till 90 days when the airline comes to you and say, my report says this and yours says that, and it's like, I can't do anything about it. Real-time data enabled through the blockchain. 
I talked about new travel because it was in my notes, I had to. They're a great partner, Michael Harbin right there from New Travel. Michael and I worked together at G2 Switchworks when we were in there kicking sand in the eye of the GDS a few years ago. And we're still at it. We're focused on airline direct, supplier direct programs. And we're able to push this innovation forward because we're connected to their microservices. We want to make every step as easy and efficient for us to move through, to get to market, to innovate, to iterate, to meet the needs of the buyers. In this case, this is an airline.com site, unnamed. And the buyer connected directly to the supplier would have the capability to manage their traveler benefits. Does that make sense? The ability through Universal Connect to go in and say, I want to look at what rewards I have, how I'm using them, create a custom bundle based on what are those traveler benefits that you have today, allocate those rewards to specific travelers or specific groups, and then track the availability, the utilization. What did I use? How did I use it? Where can I use it better? What kind of value did I deliver? Buyers are very keen for this, and suppliers are too, because suppliers put all these dollars out there. They don't have a very good way to manage it. They can't manage it at the point of sale. And today, without the smart contract capability to come in, manage it at the point of sale, uh, immutable, single source of data truth, all that gobbledygook, those are the things that will really power this. And, but what you need to remember, we're automating the agreements for better execution and better tracking. So a, a buyer who connects to a dot-com, and by the way, we heard some announcements by some airlines, United, and others talking about direct efforts, okay? Doesn't seem like leak, leakage is a problem in the industry either, he said, right? So the big problems there, buyers think they know better, they're going to other places to get their content. They're booking other things. We need to figure out a better way to bring that together. Some corporations say, that's great. Let my travelers do their thing. It needs to be a better way to track that, to give them the best experience, to have that data, to make sure that duty of care, that safety, security, and all the things that we're concerned about are handled. And in this case, airline direct through a dot com at the point of booking, in the point of sale, you're presented with a reward bundle. Once again, that can be based on what that corporation wants to provide to which travelers at which time. So, automated. Our air price will be in five minutes at the front expo entrance. Five minutes and 15 seconds. Five minutes and 15 seconds. Two minutes left. Okay. And then again, where that bundle comes, show it up in the point of sale when they're making that travel decision, not at the airport when, well, I thought I was gonna get you that upgrade, or, oh, wait, I got some soft dollars, I can give you this. Do it when they're booking. Let them have that better expectation of what the trip's gonna be and what kind of comfort they might get to make it a more, uh, a more productive trip. Now, so control versus choice, a big problem for managers. What I showed you here is how we can go and help them address that. Not talking about the technology, but know their buyers are doing different things, figuring out where we can give them that control while providing choice. Suppliers want to deliver unique content, and we've heard about that over and over and over. We're delivering unique content at the point of sale. Today, it's traveler benefits, but that's just the beginning. There's so many other things that can be delivered, how it can be delivered, how it's utilized. That will be in my next half hour. The focus on the traveler experience. I hope I showed by the simple application of automating the process, delivering those benefits to your travelers that we can address that. There's a lot of other things to do to improve for traveler experience, but this is a good step going forward. And we work with you, we work with your partners, we're, again, we're not an NDC, we're not a GDS, we're a solution provider, and that solution is how we sit down at the table and talk to your partners, figure out what your pain point is. You know, frankly, right now, what I'm looking for is corporations that want to go out there and step into the world of a pilot, of a use case pilot. We have a large program running right now with a global firm, 
and that will continue to expand. But what we'll be doing in the coming year are pilots, proof of concept, so you can see how this works, we can prove out the benefits, and then we can expand that. And then finally, it's a game changer, isn't it? Come on, it's a game changer, it's a life changer. So be part of it. You know, don't sit back unless you wanna keep what we got. And I'm, whether it's our technology or other companies here, you gotta get involved. Someone's gotta step up and say, let's, let's push this thing forward. One bite at a time. That's how we move this industry. You know, I'm getting too old to try to fight change anymore in this business. I've been around five years in, in this business. It's been longer. We all have a vested stake in moving the change forward, and, and so that's why we're here. Thank you. Any questions? Stop. Questions? Presentation was that thorough. Thank you. So we're, we're running way ahead of schedule. We've got one more presenter. We're just gonna go grab Charles from Group Eyes and uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate it. You know it's been a long week and uh, really, really glad that you guys came.
Rubin. Congratulations, Holly. Thanks, Kathy. All right. All right, we're going to spin our prize drawing cards. The first prize is going to be an iPad courtesy of HRS. Again, you must be present to win. And the winner of an iPad courtesy of HRS. We're good? Okay. <laughs> the next prize is a two round trip business class tickets to the church. Thank you all for participating in the raffle and coming to our expo. 
Oh, we appreciate it. Have a great day. All right. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for your patience. Um, I'm Charles. I'm the founder of Group Eyes, and today we're going to talk about some innovation that goes even beyond transient and meetings. So, in most of your organizations, you know, those were always siloed departments. Uh, as we've seen in more recent years, those departments are coming more together because there's a lot of synergies, a lot of a uh, similar span, and now we're going even beyond that. So first of all, I want to explain what a group eyes is so you can get a, an understanding for the sort of the genesis of the company and where we're going. And then we'll go into some of the sort of more unique and sort of hot topics on other use cases like projects and guest travel and engagements and how this is you know, really growing and how it can be automated. And then we'll show some sort of our, some of our innovations on um, digitizations. So what's a group eyes? I think we started in the corporate market about uh, eight years ago, focus on small meetings. So the type of meetings that are done by your admins that are sort of decentralized, that you have no visibility. You know, there was the incoming players that focused on the large meetings. And by focusing on some of these use cases, uh, early on we integrated the Concur, the GDS, and we created a sort of flexible uh, meetings, event, groups, extended, extended stay product. So it does a lot. And you know, in today's world, what we're seeing is there's a lot of these small meetings that can be 60 to 80 percent of your meetings, uh, and more and more they're being done by admins. But we'll talk about also about hiring managers, coordinators, all these use cases, and how you bring them into your sort of existing tech stack, and you can automate it. So we're not a big company; uh, we're growing, uh, but we have big customers, uh, and we're learning from all these big customers pockets of spend, pockets of things that can be automated beyond meetings. Uh, we're known as Group Eyes. We're also known now as Concur Event Management by Group Eyes. So as you might know, Concur resells this product for the various reasons you're going to see. And one of the main reasons is typically meetings is about 42% of your T&E. So most companies have no clue how many meetings they have, how big it is. All that spend is opaque. You can't find it. But it's a huge part of your spend. And if you start digging a bit deeper, there's not that many great researches, but this is one that GBTA did with IHG a few years ago. But when you start looking at um, projects, consultants, and everything, it's even bigger than transient. So a lot of these use cases that don't really fit in an OBT can be, you know, in this case, if you believe this research, 68% of uh, these solutions. So, why the need for this technology? I think every company now has to do more with less. Less meeting planners in a company, less coordinators for these projects and crews, recruiting and everything. So there's a need to automate all these use cases. And these use cases, we say, you know, they look and they, you know, they look and smell like meetings. You know, there's no meeting room, but you're dealing with the same type of coordination. So the same sort of, you know, you've been to this event here, you were invited, you registered, you booked your travel, you have the app on site. So the same type of coordination and workflow for these sort of multi-travelers apply. So we use the same building blocks that you would use to do a meeting to maybe doing recruiting, consultant travel, projects in here are perfect example. And a lot of these are not handled by the travel manager, they're not in your marketing department. You know, the pockets of spend that you got to identify sort of in HR for you know, recruiting and training projects in your facilities department. So as you know, most of you might be travel managers and things. a lot of pockets of spend that are done in Excel, inefficiently, out of your system that you can bring in-house. And this, this diagram was done uh, many years ago for a large online retailer. They do about $100 million in projects in our tool. And when we identified the problem with them, it was actually this use case. So we're moving people for different projects, months at a time, and there's all these hands, you know, all these emails, offline systems and everything from sourcing the room block to the roster management to the booking the travel, whether it was room block or the air was done offline, uh, the whole payments, reconciling, you know, really inefficient process. Um, I think just by automating it and everything, they were, they were saving something like 20% off the bat. So how do you bring all these 
sort of disparate players, this disparate process into your existing tool. In our case, mostly concur travel and concur expense, you know, tied and integrated with group buys. So this is the opportunity that's at hand, you know, and we put it on top here. These use cases have the same building block as a meeting, communication, logistics, coordinating the travel, whether it's offline or online, to support the expense um, into one tool. And another way to look at it also is not only sort of the planning experience in the back end, but the user experience. So in recruiting, for example, we're, we're all fighting for the best talent, you know, and you're trying to prove that you're a smart, sophisticated company, and then you send out an email and fill out this form, and three days later, the agency will call you and give you two flights, and it won't be the right flight. So how do you streamline a recruiting experience that, one, puts your best foot forward, makes you look professional, while still utilizing the, you know, your core tools and so on? So just a bit like a meeting, this would be a workflow for guest travel. You can send them a, an invite with a website that has all the details, you know, the hotels they can stay at, the restaurants, how to do, they can book their, you're gonna, they can book their own air, their own hotel in your OBT. So, you know, we do guest travel directly. Uh, you can have ghost cards, virtual card, and then you can communicate with them with the agenda and everything. So again, using the building blocks of what might look like, smell like a meeting to create a first class experience in your own processes. So some of the features that, um, are under the hood, just so you understand uh, what you can bring together. You know, we say we're at the intersection of travel, expense, and meetings. So, it, you know, depending on what you do, you know, there's travel tools in here with the integration to the OBT, the room block management. Um, there's meeting functionality with the websites, the registration websites, the app, and then expense functionality. And that's actually an area that's really growing uh, in the small meeting world, in the meeting world. Um, on two sides, on the expense side. And I'll touch on that just in a second. And as I mentioned, uh, we're tightly integrated to Concur uh, at the profile level, the itinerary level, uh, two-way push and pull. So some of these tools, uh, you know, work with your existing systems. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we can do on top of your existing system, multi-traveler, we can do guest travel, ghost card, and so on. So. One of the innovation that we're just launching right now is more around the expense aggregation. When you're running a, an event, a meeting, you don't have full visibility into all that spend. You, know, you might have some fixed costs that you're aware of because you booked the meeting rooms and the food and beverage. And on top of that, you have a room block, which is handled in a different system. And then you have all your people booking their own air and concur. And you never get the full visibility on the spend. Same with the project. You know, if you've got to reinvoice the client and everything, how many people come in, come out, what was my actual cost? So what we do is we aggregate the, all that spend from all sort of these disparate sources. So under a meeting, what do you know about from your hard costs? And then what are all your variable costs that give you the full cost of an event? And then we're working more on payment solutions. And I think that's going to be very transformative in that space. You know, some of you already use probably meeting cards and virtual cards, but all around the guest travel. Um, so right now we're agnostic to other people's product. We're most likely building also our own product around uh, paying uh, for a meeting. So, you know, take a meeting that's maybe $50,000. You probably already do this. You get a $50,000 uh, meeting card, and then it's easy to pay your suppliers independently without having to go to, you know, an AP process, a PO process, and then having all the data in one system. So that was, I don't know how much time I have, but that was the overview of what we're seeing as changes. Um, just maybe to summarize it, small meetings is a hot topic right now. Uh, you're probably seeing it in your company uh, a lot more internal meetings, off-sites, on-site, and less staff to plan them. So, so small meetings, self-service meeting is exploding. And then as part of that, uh, the other use cases I talked about, uh, projects, recruiting, guest travel, are also uh, exploding and looking for automated solutions. I hope this was insightful. Thank you for staying around. And then, uh, if there's any questions, we're open to it. Yes. Mostly in Concur. So with guest booking, you know, there's a lot of different ways. If it's a room block, if you do multiple guest booking, let's say an intern class, you might have a room block. So room blocks are handled in group eyes, but pushed to Concur. 
We also have our own booking engine for hotels for guest booking because when you do guest booking in, you know, a lot of times you want to only display three hotels with specific rates. So we have our own hotel booking engine if you want for these guest booking with a ghost card. The air is mostly handled in Concur. You know, we have two workflow, one if you want to do full service, one if you want to do it in Concur. And then when we punch out to Concur, we create the guest profile on the fly and then they can book and concur around some set, set rules that you want. Again, mostly likely with a ghost card, what airports they have to fly into, when, what rules, and everything. So the guest booking is an aggregation of the user experience in group eyes, and the air is mostly done in concur. So. All right. Well, thank you. I didn't really expect anybody to stay, so very happy you're all here. <laughs>